episode of RMN News. Ariana, have you heard of the classic cars Lamborghini and Equus 77? Yes, I have, but I would really like to learn more about them. Well, we can all learn more in the next segment. Hey, Bulls, I'm Eric. And I'm Sam. Today I'll be telling you some facts about the Lamborghini. I'll be talking about the Equus Fast 770. Did you know that the Equus Fast 770 is a muscle and luxurious car? No, I didn't. Tell us more. It is modeled from a 1967 Ford Mustang Fastback and a Dodge Challenger all into one car. It has a supercharged Corvette ZR1 engine with 640 horsepower and a speed of 200 miles per hour. It is also supercharged with a V8 engine. It also weighs around 3,640 pounds and costs $253,000. On the other hand, did you know that the Lamborghini started in 1963 by Fabrizio Lamborghini with the 350 GT and with the V12 engine? That it can reach 350 miles per hour by 1964 the company Lamborghini was already competing with Ferrari and Maserati in 2013 and 14 he came up with the Lamborghini Veneno with a V12 engine with with speeds up to 221 miles per hour and can go 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds that was very interesting, and I really liked hearing about the Lamborghini. Ariana, have you ever heard of the movie Blackfish? Yes, and it's very troubling. Would you mind giving me some more information? It is about how SeaWorld treats are killer whales. I don't know anything more, but we will get caught up on it in our next segment. Everybody loves Shamu, the six-ton killer whale trained to do tricks for the whole crowd. Recently, a troubling documentary called Blackfish raises question on whether it's ethical to tr take these orcas from the wild. Blackfish claims that SeaWorld captures orcas and drives them mad in captivity, which caused the death of one of their trainers. Let's go over to Ms. DePaulo's students to learn more about this controversial issue. What is the message of Blackfish? Well, I think the message of Blackfish was really like keeping uh, orcas in captivity, and I think they were trying to sh tell us that uh, it's better to keep them in the wild because it could cause them damage. It could endanger them and maybe kill them and it hurts people too so they like the trainers there's many accidents they're trying to show us that it's better to keep them in the wild than captivity um, the message of blackfish I think is that SeaWorld can be fun and educational but there's negative things about it that no one ever knew what is your opinion on blackfish uh, my opinion on blackfish is that um, I think they're wrong because they're blaming the orcas for attacking the the, wor the the trainers. But that's actually the trainer's fault because orcas are meant to be in the wild. And the trainers, they pick that job. No one makes them work there. So it's their fault. They should already know. Once Every, every day they go to work, they should already know, oh, I have to be careful, you know. So it's the trainer's fault, not the orcas. Well, my opinion is that you... It's bad keeping the whales and mammals in captivity. But then the good thing is that they're saving endangered species once in a while, and yeah, that's what I think. How does blackfish affect the city of San Diego? Um, if tourists came from like other states and they saw that documentary, they might think that SeaWorld's a negative place to go and visit because they might think that SeaWorld is um, hurting the animals and keeping them from the wild where they should be. I think it affects the city of San Diego in that, like, if they see the video, they might think that, like, the San Diego Zoo or the, any of the other parks are bad, and then many of the people won't, like, want to go over there, and many of the parks will lose money. When you look into their eyes, you know somebody is home. They're an animal that possesses great spiritual power not to be meddled with. Orange County Sheriff's Office. 
We need SO to respond for a dead person at SeaWorld. A whale has eaten one of the trainers. Tilikon, though, is the one that went after her. Don is the senior trainer here at Shamu Stadium. She captured what it means to be a SeaWorld trainer, that it made me realize what happened to her really could have happened to anyone. I've been expecting somebody to be killed by a Tilikon. We weren't told much about it, other than it was trainer error. It didn't just happen. It's not a singular event. You have to go back to understand this. The speedboat herded them in, and they could just pick out the young ones. This is the worst thing that I've ever done. When Tilikum arrived at SeaWorld, he was twice as large as the next animal. We stored these whales in what we call a module, which was 20 feet across and 30 feet deep, and the lights were all turned out. Probably led to what I think is a psychosis. in captivity are all psychologically traumatized. It's not just Tilikum. If you were in a bathtub for 25 years, don't you think you'd get a little psychotic? Don would tell you that it was her mistake. They blamed her. It's just a bold-faced lie. I was just instructed to get rid of the day. The industry has a vested interest in spinning these. That sells a lot of Shamu dolls. It sells a lot of tickets at the gate. There's no record of an orca doing any harm in the wild. Wow, that was amazing. I'm so glad they did a documentary on that. Me too. Have you heard of our school's teacher, Miss Parody? Yes, but I've only heard of her briefly. I would really like to learn more about her and what she teaches. In our next segment, there will be some more information on her and what she does for our school. So, why should students pick to go here at Rancho Minerva? Um, because we have an amazing library. It is enormous, and we have a wonderful librarian, Mrs. Cox, who is there to help kids all the time during lunch, before school, after school. We have a really great band program. Um, we've been adding a lot more electives so that students have some interesting choices um, for their free period and um, we have a really really great PE program and um, learning a lot about uh, nutrition and also improving our cafeteria choices to things that students like and that are healthy choices. Those are mainly what the pros are here mm -hmm. if you decide to pick this as your next school mm -hmm. choice. So what are some of those pros? Um, things that I've heard students say that they really like about the school is that um, we have a principal who's really involved in the school. He's out there with the students at lunch every day. He's out there before school greeting the students. Um, him and the assistant principals, both of them are all very involved in the school and um, really getting into school spirit, encouraging people to um, wear school-related clothing, giving out prizes, doing raffles. They really do their best to make it a fun place, not just um, school all the time. And then there's also the Spirit Suites too. Yes, we have right, like so kind of on top of that. So we've been trying, definitely having new ways to bring a lot of fun things into the normal, um, you know, instruction. Yeah. So what grade level do you teach and most importantly what subject? Um, I teach sixth grade, the best grade obviously, math and science. That was a great interview for the fifth graders coming to our school next year and a great ending for the show. That was our fourth newscast for Rancho Minerva News. News you can believe in. Pow! Stop.